Good morning from Jeromesville United Methodist Church on this snowy, snowy day. Uh, some announcements. You have a, an insert for cookies, and they're really good. So uh, please, if you would like to have some, the deadline for ordering two weeks from today, if you would like some. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. to stand for the call to worship. <clears throat> and all together now. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's sing together, leaning on the everlasting arms.
us, we have a few joys. First of all, thank you to the Mark and Jack for, and then for Mike, who did the second round, and Jill with her snowblower. So, so we thank you. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Um, I hope you notice, or will notice, the beautiful quilt that Ruth Ann Jolliffe made for the 200th anniversary. And hopefully all of you were able to sign it. I don't know if you remember a while ago, uh, but it is very nice. Um, we just did the 2021 year-end reports, which Mark loves and Connie loves and I love, but Connie, um, they put last year's totals and then what you come up for with this year. And the 2020 getting was 147,759 and 2021, it was 159,626, 8% increase. Considering what has happened, you are so faithful. To God be the glory, and thank you. Our prayer list, uh, Connie Weitzel is in the hospital after a fall. Donna Denny had back surgery this week, and Sharisa Butcher, um, Pat Butcher's daughter-in-law, is in hour 22 of labor, when she sent me a text a little while ago. And also, um, Becker, oh, mom. Ah, thank you. Melissa Becker's on her way to Florida. Her father, Rod Sizemore, um, might have to go back into the hospital. So she's on her way down there. Let us keep everyone in our prayers. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Everlasting God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, we bow our heads before you in love. We honor and adore you. We praise your mighty name. Our minds are filled with the knowledge we have gained from your word. Our hearts rejoice because of your grace, which we do not deserve and cannot earn. Lord Jesus, you are amazing. We believe in you, Jesus. Our faith continues to grow as we live for you and only you. Life is not easy. We face challenges every day. Those we love are hurting. All of us are hurting in some way. Lord, we come to you for strength knowing without a doubt that you will give us what we need to be faithful to you in all circumstances. We pray for all on our prayer list, those that we have named out loud and those we name in our hearts. Surround each person with a hedge of protection, restoration, and love. Great physician, heal only as you can. Lord, your word is fresh water for us. Help us to make time to quench our thirst, to read and study the Bible as never before. The answers to all our questions, doubts, and fears can be found in Genesis through Revelation. Guide us as we learn and grow. All of this, this we pray in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have three short scripture readings and we're going to read them together. The first is, oh, they all have a common link. The first is Isaiah 12, 2 and 3. Let us read together. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And now we have John chapter 7, 37 and 38. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And by Revelation 21, verse 6. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. This is the word of the Lord. Did you catch? A, I heard something. Water, thirst, yeah. Yeah, we're going to be talking about that. I invite you to stand for hymn 397. I need the every hour, verses 1, 3, and 5. Hear the word of the gospel from John. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. 
When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself? as did also his sons and his flocks and herds? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. My long-awaited, highly anticipated eye surgery happened (laughs) this past Wednesday, five days ago. And it's been interesting. The the left eye was what I had done, removal of a cataract and an insertion of a toric lens, which is like top of the line, I understand. Well, the first time, it was supposed to happen the day before Thanksgiving, up at Lodi Hospital. Well, scratch that, my eye was not ready. It was then scheduled for December 30th at Ashland. Nope, nope, scratch that, the hospital was not allowing elective surgeries. Third time a charm? Nope. I scratched the surgery scheduled for January 13th in Ashland pastoral care that week was much more important than me. The fourth time was the charm, Wednesday, January 19th at Ashland, and the ride I scheduled for February 3rd. As in many things, it's in God's timing, not ours. Well, not allowed to eat or drink anything after midnight, I was really dismayed because I had to check in at 11.15. An hour and a half prep, 12.45 the surgery done out of there by 1.30. Well, that didn't work so well. It was an hour before they came and got me. Ellen was with me and anyway, it was a long time without food and water and I fully expected to be lightheaded and have a headache, not to mention a drop in sugar, but God is good. And that cheeseburger at Wendy's was like the best thing I've ever tasted. Ah, yes. Though the average human body is more than 50% water, we continually crave water. Lack of water leads to dehydration, which can lead to physical ailments. Now, having only witnessed this on cartoons, mind you, walking through the desert certainly leads to dehydration and hallucinations. One gets so thirsty that a mirage appears of clear, cool water, it appears in the distance, and Daddy Duck just run for it, and he starts shoveling it in, thinking it's water, and then he realizes it's sand, and he (laughs) spits it out. Yeah, I know, I need a life, but (laughs) I love Duffy. But then, come to think of it, on a hot summer day, we can see what looks like a pool of water on the road in front of us. Yeah, and it sometimes seems so real that We almost hit the brakes. Water. 
Water is used in many ways, bathing, cooking, doing laundry, keeping the plants alive, just to name a few. Water washes us clean, making us feel fresh and new again. Water in the Old Testament was an important symbol of God's work in the world. Genesis tells the life-changing story of Noah and his ark. Water was a symbol of death and also a symbol of rebirth. Moses led the Israelites to freedom by crossing the Red Sea on dry ground, told in the book of Exodus. And the Israelites completed their journey to the Promised Land by crossing the Jordan River on dry ground under the leadership of Joshua. We know that water is powerful. Once it gets going, nothing and no one can survive its fury. Hurricane Ida left a path of death and destruction from the Gulf of Mexico all the way through New York City and probably beyond. Waverly, Tennessee, I think it was Waverly, was washed away by a creek that turned into a raging river. Unbelievable stories of people, including infants being held in their parents' arms, ripped away, taken down the river. Little to no warning for the residents. That's the power of water at its worst. There is also the power of the living water that washes away our sins. Jesus Christ is our living water. He who suffered, died, and rose for us is our water of salvation. And recall Psalm 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God the living God. We may not realize it, but each of us does want a relationship with Jesus Christ. Just as we crave water to drink, each of us desires the living water, even if we don't think we do. Because once we drink from the well of salvation, we will no longer thirst. The Samaritan woman at the well was confused by what Jesus said. We too, we don't really get it, yet we know it is truth. Our physical thirst will forever need quenched. Refreshing our bodies so we don't get lightheaded, lose our balance, and fall. And some of us can't bounce back up to our feet very easily, and I'm very thankful for the Drumsville Fire Department. They're wonderful. Our spiritual thirst can be quenched by the water Christ offers. Huh, how much does it cost? A thousand bucks? Ten thousand? A hundred thousand? A million? Revelation 21 tells us that in the New Jerusalem, We can drink from the spring of the water of life without cost, the new Jerusalem. Of course, during our earthly life, Jesus tells us in John 7, have faith in me and you will have life-giving water flowing from deep inside you. And in John 4, the Lord taught the Samaritan woman The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water. Just picture that. A spring of water gushing to eternal life. Our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, our sacrifice, our water of salvation offers eternal life. Through our repentance and his forgiveness of our sins, Jesus presents us with the gift 
of new life in him. We live for Jesus now through our faithful service and witness, and we wait with hope and expectation, excitement for Christ's ultimate gift of eternal life with him. When we drink of Christ as the living water, this will become in us a fountain of water springing up into eternal life, into the new Jerusalem. Only by drinking the living water can we be satisfied and never disappointed. As we drink the Lord as the living water, something happens within our being. This living water enters us, permeates us, passes through our entire being, and is assimilated into our spiritual being. As we drink the living water and it saturates us, we are nourished, transformed, conformed, and glorified. May we realize that the Lord himself is our salvation and we can draw water out of the springs of the water of life, his divine salvation. Let us pray. Lord, how we love water, nourishing, refreshing, but also life-giving. Lord, help us as we go from this place to draw closer to you in any way we can through reading your word, making it part of our lives. And we thank you, Lord, that you are the living water. In your name we pray. Amen. So we're working towards eternal life, so we're marching to Zion. I invite you to stand.
quenched of your thirst by Jesus, the living water. Go in peace. Amen.